Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is the long awaited uh, follow up to uh, the first video that we uh, dropped about the uh, Discovery 5. That's uh, been probably a year and a half ago now. Uh, I've had reoccurring issues with this vehicle. Um, it has been a nightmare of an experience. Uh, it's not the car's fault, the SUV, truck, whatever you want to say. Uh, there's bad owners and bad dealers. <laughs> we bought it with uh, very, very few miles on the vehicle. Um, it's just absolutely meant everything that we wanted. Uh, if you want to check out the, the first video, I'll put a link in the bottom. But uh, at any rate, very early on, uh, two months in, had uh, the very first issue, maybe even a month, month and a half, uh, the restricted performance light would kept uh, kept coming on. Um, the uh, the dealer that is in proximity to our home, um, two hours away, and uh, basically uh, we had dealt with them before in the past and decided to uh, to, to utilize uh, them to try to troubleshoot and fix it. Uh, anyway, it was still under warranty, it's certified pre-owned. Um, anyway, so uh, that restricted performance light came on. Uh, we took it, uh, took it in, they checked it out. Um, nothing uh, that they could really determine um, on the first go around that was, uh, was actually wrong with it. Um, so, uh, pretty soon after that, had to take it back in again. This time it was just, uh, uh, they said a, a, a malformed hose from the heat or something like that. Anyway, and somewhere in the, in this point, it starts making, uh, or in this time frame rather, it starts making a, uh, a pretty noticeable like clunk, um, just uh, to me, it sounded like gear bind, um, or something like that. They never could get it to do anything. They did, um, probably hear it at some point in time because they did, um, what uh, the recommendation is to, uh, flush and refill. And, uh, but, uh, they just could not make it do it after the flush and refill and it kept getting worse and worse. Um, I had the feeling that uh, what was going to happen was it was just going to grenade. They were just waiting on it to do so. Uh, so it's not a good feeling. So we had restricted performance that did not get fixed. And we had the uh, recurring noise that just uh, it's been two years of fighting this. Uh, fast forward to now, uh, we took it to a different dealer two and a half hours away from here. Very nice people. They listened, understood the concerns, were up against the mileage, putting the car out of warranty. Um, so uh, they were very aware of that, that we needed to get this fixed and, and get it rectified. Uh, they heard the noise. They fixed it. We'll go over a complete recap of everything. And I feel just kind of like if they would have just listened to me in the first place, we could have saved everybody plenty of aggravation. Um, this, this whole time of ownership with this car, we've had these recurring problems and it was just due to dealer negligence. And I don't want to throw them under the bus necessarily, but, uh, they give Land Rover a bad name. This point blank. That's, that's where it's at. Um, they, they could have fixed this issue. I felt like from the word go, uh, this 30,000 miles in two years that we've had it, uh, have been nothing but problems. And it just something that I've just felt like it was just neglect. They just didn't take care of us on it. So anyway, uh, they've uh, replaced full replacement of the turbo. It is a turbo diesel. Um, and, but uh, they say it's good as new. So we'll give a recap, go and get the car, collect it. Uh, uh, I also want to just, uh, <laughs> it's just out of curiosity, I want to go back and look and I just want to, un just to understand the amount of time we were away from this vehicle during ownership. It's 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 mind boggling. And uh, anyway, um, the shout out to Owens Murphy in Little Rock, Arkansas. They have been above and beyond to get this thing done. They're going to collect it. Should be nothing out of pocket. It was carried out under warranty. So um, hopefully uh, we'll just uh, um, you know no more fingers crossed. We've got the issues behind us. So um, not mere discovery no more. Anyway, going to pick it up. With great anticipation, we arrived at the dealership, parked in service, and went in to sign some papers. And uh, it wasn't long, and well, 
We were laying eyes on this Discovery 5 for the first time in about uh, three months. I made it to service here at Owens Murphy in Little Rock, and uh, they promptly pulled the car around, ran it through the uh, through the car wash, and uh, had it over here in the service bay waiting for us. Uh, no charge. We'll go down a full list of all the things that uh, that they did this time, um, and plus go over all of the idle time that this vehicle um, sat in the shop. But I was checking out this uh, new Defender that they just unloaded off the truck. Brand new Range Rover, and the brand new Range Rover is an absolute stunning vehicle. Uh, it's got the nice uh, um, integrated door handles, uh, kind of like off that they started with the Velar. And, uh, but the rear uh, most um, glass for the for the for the boot area is the most amazing the back end is gorgeous and it is just it's it's really awesome to see one in person it's the first one i've got to see in person so anyway i'm right, gonna be uh, making our way home i will uh hatch out a video obviously to go over a stack of paperwork we have about all the times that the car was at the dealer during ownership and i guarantee you it's going to be very close to um in total time i would say this thing probably set um in the uh in in service for a year um no joke so anyway catch a big view here of some other inventory so we're out of here Problem number one, restricted performance light on customer states, restricted performance light comes on randomly, which we've documented this over and over and over again. So what was installed? They officially replaced the turbo. This is like a crazy in-depth warranty job. I mean, you've pretty much got a, I, I, you know, they, they, they can drop the body off of the, the, the motor and frame, um, and everything. I, I don't exactly know what the, uh, what the protocol is with this diesel, but at any rate, um, <laughs> it was, uh, it was a nightmare for them. And I just appreciate all the work that they did. Uh, but the turbo was bad. So that was a turbocharger, the gaskets, uh, for the uh, oil, oil, oil tube, oil return, exhaust gasket, uh, another oil tube gasket, a kit for the injector, more banjo bolts, uh, and a full six quarts of uh, 5W30, and antifreeze. Okay, so this was the approval. Uh, they found the fault code PO299 to be present. No updates were available. Charge air pipe had, has already been replaced and is not at fault. Bypass valve is functioning as designed. Found turbocharger to have internal mechanical failure. Ordered replacement, drain coolant and oil, removed exhaust, front drive shaft, and left EGR valve removed. Turbocharger and transferred parts to replacement. Found coolant hoses on turbocharger to be warped, causing clearance problem. Replaced hose and pipe, reassembled engine, exhaust, and dry shaft, refilled coolant and oil after replacement of turbocharger. No, uh, no further faults found. B uh, banjo bolt, uh, gasket for the turbocharger, and exhaust gasket. So we finally got to the bottom of the restricted performance. And this uh, was also, uh, you, you heard me say something about the... Uh, the fitment issue, uh, he, the, that was causing a misalignment 
uh, I want to say that there was a, uh, they had to do a do-over. Do they had it completely buckled up, buttoned up almost to the point where I messed up one bolt, the threads wouldn't catch, and it was because of that. So when he re reassembled, took everything back apart, they had to do another um, turbo, order another turbo, and and, and then you know, complete the rest of that because that was a, um, had, had made a, a boo-boo on it when we messed up the threads. Okay, customer states vehicle makes a noise at very low speeds, less than 10 miles per hour while turning or uphill. Uh, somehow this always gets uh, a little bit misconstrued. It would do it on flat ground. It didn't have to be going uphill. It could be doing it downhill. Um, just basically, as soon as you let off the, uh, the brake uh, to give it a little bit of gas, it would spool up. Uh, you'd feel just kind of like it's delivering the power. It is all-wheel drive. It did have a locking rear differential, center diff lock um, on these as well. So uh, if you pulled up the four by four pages, you could actually see what would happen. It would uh, lock the center on drive pavement and then immediately lock the rear. And it would, it would lurch a little and it would make this clunk or a thump or really hard, sort of sound like something heavy just fell over um, and you could kind of feel it feel it in your in your in your in the seat of your pants when you were driving uh, what they actually did we thought they were actually going to replace the transfer case as well but apparently uh something there got a little bit um that's the only thing we, we just we weren't 100 percent clear on that so I, I was I was thinking that the new transfer case, I, I was thinking we were going to get a new transfer case, but all he did was do another um, differential oil fill and they said transfer case and differential double flush, performing flush, no further fault was found. This is the second time that that had happened. So I was not really holding my breath there. She she did to their to their end said if you have any issues whatsoever, bring it back immediately. <laughs> they would uh they would go they would they would proceed from there like it was just like they didn't fix it and then go because I I feel like the next thing would have been that they would have replaced the transfer case um or. I guess there's also the possibility if it wasn't in the transfer case because it did when it would lock and then the other one would lock, it could have been that uh, it was um, some sort of actuator inside there. It could have been trying to hang up. You know, that, that possibly could have been making that. But it felt to me like there was something internally wrong with the transfer case. Customer state's hood looks like it's uneven or not latched on one side. I diagnosed that. Um, I had had the um, other dealer look at it several, several times. They kept adjusting it. I said, there's got to be a reason why it continues to do this. Uh, they, it, Little Rock discovered that that was a, uh, a cable control and a bracket needed to be replaced. So they found that the hood cable between the latches to be stretched, replace latch to latch cable. Hood now closes and opens as designed. That was Awesome. So now it's lined up and it actually looks like a luxury vehicle with proper gap. Uh, drivability, miscellaneous, added operation. So they actually found this to be an error. Uh, the tech found vibration while driving. It needed the motor mount. And so the left mount bushing to be torn, causing noise and excess engine movement. Uh, that could have happened possibly whenever they were doing a lot of that uh, moving it around, trying to get the uh, uh, turbo in. But nonetheless, they did replace that, which is just awesome because a lot of times they just push it down the road, wait for it some other time. But they evacuated the refrigerant, drained the coolant, removed the AC compressor, removed front dry shaft, supported the engine, and replaced left engine mount, reassembled and refilled refrigerant and coolant, no further faults found on subsequent subsequent test drive. So how long was it there? So we were at Little Rock from 3.30 of 22 to 7, 11 of 22. So now that's 104 days, give or take, between um, dropping it off and picking it up. And everything was 
perfect. All right, so after fighting this for uh, the better part of uh, two years, we finally get some sort of uh, conclusion uh, to our, our to our issues. Um, it, it drove it, phenomenally well. It's always funny when you haven't been able to drive a vehicle in a while how much better it seems to to drive when you get back in it. But it was it was it was it was perfect. Um, but uh, you know. It's, on one hand, um, it was nice knowing that it was it was it was fixed properly fixed. You know, on the other, though, you feel like it, to some extent it's cursed. Um, it's just got bad bad juju. Bad. I mean, you just can't. You, when something starts to, to to happen like that with with the vehicle, you just you almost just can't escape it. You can't get get away from it. Uh, so, at any rate. Uh, did drove it around. Uh, was kind of in this limbo. Uh, it needed to go away. Just, you know, this just things that felt like it was time to part ways with the vehicle. Um, but uh, it's still torn. Didn't you know? wasn't exactly sure. Uh, but uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. So we had. Uh, <laughs> There was no more uh, restricted performance. The thing ran better than it had ever ran, uh, but uh, about probably five or six hundred miles after just driving it around um, and probably getting enough contamination back in that uh, transfer case or in the differential one, um, it, it started making that noise again. Uh, so at this point, I'm kind of like, I think we need to do uh, something different. So... Nothing is easy with this vehicle, so I'm going to actually have to make another complete video about uh, the whole uh, selling of the vehicle. And, and uh, it wasn't something that I took lightly. It wasn't like I'm just like, you know, hey, I have to just, you know, I don't trust it or whatnot. It wasn't. But, I mean, my goodness, 220 some odd, 230 days away from the vehicle that's almost one whole year of ownership that it had been in the in, in service. And we had literally only had it uh, two, two years in a, in, a, in a few months. So the next video that I'm going to do in this Nightmare Discovery series is uh, where we sold it, how we got rid of it, and the problems that were associated with that. So you're going to have to stick around. Uh, one more video, and then we will finally close this out. And if you have an issue with your TD6 discovery, let me know. But like I said, it's just that's this was a this was a this was a nightmare. I just I, I don't want I don't wish this on anybody. Um, but uh, it just seemed like we were we were never going to be able to uh, uh, to to get uh, to get to the bottom of it. But uh, Finally got a hold of the right people, people that cared, people that really wanted to fix it, and um, they 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 went above and beyond. Um, the only thing, you know, we still had uh, that issue, that 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 thumping, whatever that was, and, and you know, since it was, who knows? I mean, maybe maybe that was something that was going to do it from from it, from now on, and ever, and it would never cause some sort of mechanical breakdown. But I'm just. I'm, I'm, I'm like, if it's not supposed to do it, it shouldn't do it. And it's like, if you have to put up with it and tolerate it, I, don't, I just don't think you should have to. Uh, so, but you know, I'm not, I'm not leaving that on them. That, that wasn't, I mean, they, they did everything to try to, uh, to, to fix it. Um, I'm no doubt in my mind if we'd have taken it back to them and let them do it, but I just, well, I wasn't going to make another payment on this thing and, and, uh, have it in the shop for another month. So, um, anyway, stick around. We'll get to the bottom of the, of that, uh, watch the issues that I go through, uh, trying to get rid of it. And thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, this is not, not making this as a, uh, to try to pile on and, 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 and give Land Rover a bunch of hate. That's not, not my intent. I do feel like maybe I should have called corporate Land Rover at some point in time before it got to having to switch dealers. But, uh, it's water under the bridge now. 
Uh, I love my Land Rovers. I, it is something that you have such an emotional attachment to, to uh, a brand. And that's just what it, that's kind of what it does for me. And so um, I, I think uh, to some extent, we're getting a little bit further away from that with some of these newer vehicles. But man, I just thought that when they work, they work phenomenally well. And uh, it's just, it's a shame that you can't, uh, that you have to take something back that many times and can't get to the bottom of it. But uh, anyway, thank you so much. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, a comment. Um, please subscribe. Thank you so much.